There's grace in this verse. Beautiful grace. And it's a death threat. Uh, the sinner dies a triune death. Body, spirit, and mind. It's horrible. Spiritual suicide. A man has that volition in him to lead himself the wrong way. The Spirit of God works with him. Draw all men. Some come, some don't. Ta. Dar. Opsnia. Opsia. Do you see that looking pitchfork looking thing there? That's a PSI. That's Opsia. Opsnia. All right? Opsnia. Taste. Hamartios. Sonatos. Toll. Day. Charisma. Tu. Diu. Zoe. Aeonios. N. Christu. Asu. Toll. Kiryu. Timon. Now let's go back and look at some of this. For the just rewards, the rations, the recompense, this is the soldier, pay the allowance. Uh -huh. Alright? The all allowance of the sin is death. Alright, somebody read James 1.15 for me real quick. James 1.15. We have to see that. Galatians 6, 7, and 8 is another one. Galatians 1.15 and, 15 and uh, Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Romans 3.23, can someone quote that one for me? Okay. 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's 6.23. Yeah, 6.23 is wrong. All right. Now what was the James 1.15? Okay, James 1.15. 1.15. Mm -hmm. uh, it says... Uh, then, when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. All right. Read the number 14 also. I'll read that one more time. Um, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and what's it, enticed. Then... Baited. Pardon? He's baited, just like you go out and go fishing and you bait a fish. Uh -huh. and touch, yeah. mm -hmm. Then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin when it is finished, and it forth death. The birth child of sin is death. Hmm. When sin is finished with you, you're a dead man. Yeah. As simple as that. Hmm. All right. Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Are you over there, Cindy? Do you have that in the Amplified? Or what do you... What are you? Okay. Uh, Galatians 6, chapter 7, and 8. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do not be deceived and deluded and misled. God will not allow himself to be sneered at, scorned, disdained, or mocked by mere pretensions or professions, or by his precepts being set aside. He inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God. For whatever a man sows, that and that only is what he will reap. For he who sows to his own flesh, lower nature, sensuality, will from the first reap decay and ruin and destruction. But he who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Oh, that's, that's pretty good right there. See, Paul, he's a, uh, you know, he wrote this book. And he wrote also Galatians. And both places here, he's after the law, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Now, in, in this and preceding verses from here, he does not say the law is dead. But he said, you're dead to the law. You're dead to it. We're dead to the law. Okay? And he's going to tell it. We're going to talk on some virgin teller territory here in a few verses. All right? Now, Romans, uh, not Romans, but Luke, the 16th chapter. Let's go to Luke's the 16th chapter, verses 9 to 31. Then we're going to go to Genesis, the 16th chapter. 
Luke, the 16th chapter. We know what this is all about. All right? For the wages, the just rewards of sin is total, complete separation forever from God. But, we can verse the conjunctive particle, page 85, but the free gift of the God, Zoe, Zoe, we get zoology from Zoe, the study of life. Biology is the study of life. There's another word for life. This word here is spiritual life. Right here, Zoe. And we have uh, zoos where we look at life, living life, don't we? Okay? Life eternal. Eternal. Ionios. Eternal here means uh, one age sacked upon another over and over and over. The word olam in Hebrew is secret. Olam. Secret hidden in relating to time because Olam means an undeterminable duration of time. Eternity. All right? Eternal life. Now, how long is hell? How old is hell? How long does hell last? How long does eternal life last? Forever. Huh? Yeah, forever. Evidently. All right, now let's go to uh, Luke, the, the 16th chapter. Look at that just a little bit. Verse 9. Um, Luke 16, chapter, and verse 9. David, you over there? Uh, Luke 16? Uh, almost. See? All right. Let's see. Nah. Huh? I can't find Okay. 16, verse 9. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by Luke means... Luke 16. Luke 16? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. What am I doing wrong? No, that's right. You're right. Well, I do it. Well, You're right. Am I? Okay. Yeah. Make friends okay. For mammon. Uh, and I say to you, make friends for yourselves by means of the, the mammon of unrighteousness. And when it fails, they may receive you into the that's eternal world. That's not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. no. I, I did wrong. Luke 16, chapter. Verses 19. No, oh, we're close. Oh. 19. Yeah, we're all right. <laughs> I couldn't read my own writing. Oh, uh, the rich man? Yeah. Okay. Now there was a certain rich man, and he habitually dressed in purple and fine linen, gaily living in splendor every day. And a certain poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate. Now, let, let's stop right there for a minute. You know what the, old, the whole Old Testament does? The whole Old Testament, what does it do? Points to the Lamb of God. Well, yeah, but what the, in, in uh, civilly, in between people, civilly, the whole Old Testament tries its best to keep the rich from getting richer. That's what it's all about. It's to keep them under control. Because some people, if you turn them loose, they will control the whole world. That's the way they are. And it taxed them so heavy, and it kept them under control. Even if they got bought a slave, they couldn't keep him. They had to turn him loose. Everything it was, it just kept on trying. What we use term we use today is redistribution of wealth. They just kept on. It just kept them down, kind of kept a squelch on them just a little bit, so they couldn't get ahead. And now here is the epitome of this type of situation. Now, we have two people here. We have a lost man and a saved man. What does the Bible say about the riches of this world? It's easier for what? To go through an eye of a surgical needle. That's what it says in Hebrew and Greek. Surgical needle. The kind you sew with. How many of you ever see a camel go through the eye of a needle? <laughs> I'm not talking about the figure of speech with a little yeah. gate and the, all that moly. That's not what it's talking about. In Greek, it just takes care of all that problem. Right. Forget it. Amen. You know, the needle. How many of you ever seen a, a camel go through the eye of a needle? Pretty hard, isn't it? Pretty hard for a rich man to get into heaven, too. Only God can do it. That's all I want. Only God. Because they... They are powerful. That's it. They feel like they are God. That's why. And they don't want to answer to a higher power because they think they are the higher power. That's the whole Old Testament. That's it. The whole Old Testament. 
Here we have, and now we have, we have this brought over into the New Testament. By the way, the rich man's name is probably Nineveh. In some of the oldest manuscripts, his name is Nineveh. Or Dives. You hear the story of Dives. Dives or Nineveh. Okay? He had a name. Okay? This was not, this is not a parable. Put down there someplace, not a parable. This is a historical event. This took place. This is a story of a real occurrence. Okay? Uh, David. Okay. Uh, and a certain poor man named Lazarus was late at his gate, covered with sores, and longing to be fed with the crumbs which were falling from the rich man's table. Besides, even the dogs were coming and licking his sores. All right. By the way, dogs, uh, the saliva in a dog is curing. They yeah. lick their wounds and everything else. It cures. There is an antibiotic in that saliva. And they were, these poor animals, now this man, not, uh, not every poor man is good. <laughs> and not every rich man is bad. I want you to understand this. But this is the great run of the mill. Okay? Run of the mill deal. Okay? okay. Now he said that the, 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 he has no medical. That sounds like America, doesn't it? If you're not rich in America, you get no medical treatment. That's just the way it is. The highest America, uh, medical cost in the world is here. This is it. All right. He had he couldn't go to the doctor, so the dogs, the wild animals, had to minister to him. Incredible, isn't it? All right. Okay. All now, right. Go ahead, David. Now, now it came about that the poor man died, and he was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and saw Abraham far away. Okay, now hold on here. We've got to explain this just a little bit. This is the end result of Romans 6.23. All right. Rich man is in thonatos now. He's spiritually dead. He has committed spiritual suicide and he's done for. He is separated forever from God. <coughs> I talked to a person the other day on the telephone, and they were having trouble with Christianity. They were, they were I think it was Muslim. And he uh, was having trouble with eternal death and separation of what hell was. And I told him hell is the same descriptive measures on eternal life as on eternal damnation and hell bar. But eternal damnation is thonatos. I want you to understand that that is final and total and complete separation from God. You are around Him. And you will be around a bunch of other gutter snipes in file 13 forever. Period. That's what your company is going to be. The garbage pit of humanity. That's why Jesus used the garbage pit of Jerusalem to, to describe hell. Hell is file 13, people. That's the garbage can. Okay? All right, now he's died. And he lifts his eyes up in Hades so he can see in hell, can he? Now, just remember, this man is before the resurrection. He doesn't have a body. He only has a similitude of a body. He has memory. And he has feelings. Now, he's dead. His body is in the ground someplace. But now this man's soul is in Hades. And what does Hades mean? Hades. The place not seen. That's what it means. The place not seen. Nobody's ever seen hell and gone back. They talk about all these stories about people seeing heaven and people seeing hell and coming back. Don't know about that. All right? I, I just don't know about that. Okay? place not seen. What is the Hebrew equivalent for Hades? Greek is Hades. What's the, what is the Hebrew word? Sheol. 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 Saul's name was to ask about. His name meant ask about. They asked for a king and God gave him, you asked for it. That's what his name was. Alright? Sheol means the place ask about. Where did my grandma or grandpa go? And by the way, Sheol and Hades is the same place. Now, all people went to Sheol and Hades because that's the place of departed spirits. It's not simply 
the place of suffering or the place of paradise. There was a paradise that was in part of Hades and Sheol. Hades and Sheol was in one, we're going to just draw a circle, okay? And, and there's a great gulf between them. Now this gulf could have been the earth. There's the earth. Heaven is always in the Bible is up, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And where is it? Up how far? To the third heaven. Yeah. Third heaven. Okay? Now if you look in this gulf, and you look down here below the earth, and it talks about hell being down under the earth. Caught off? Hippo down under the earth. Not in it's not down in the earth, but down under the earth. Now if we had the other half of this, here we have half of it up here. Alright? And half of it down here, the place of departed spirits, and one side is paradise or Abraham's bosom, and the other side is torments. Okay, torments. We're just guessing about some of this because we don't really know everything about. Now, translate, say, after the cross. The thief from the cross went to paradise. Paradise, I believe, was taken to the third heaven after. Paradise itself was taken to the third heaven, okay? I actually got this backwards. Here was the paradise up here and the place of torments down here, okay? All right, let's go on here, David. You know what David means? In Hebrew, that means beloved. Yeah, beloved. All right. All right there, beloved. Let's get with it. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue, for I am in agony in this flame. All right, now he doesn't have a tongue, really. But he has a sensation of having a tongue. He doesn't have fingers, but he has a sensation of still having touch and fingers and feet and all of this. Now remember, he's not resurrected. He has no real, physical, tangible body. But yet, it does. His soul is able to feel all of these torments. After the resurrection, it's going to be a whole lot worse. How about the other half, the, the Lazarus group? Okay, Lazarus group, this is what we call paradise. There, the, the sin debt had not been paid. Yeah. The cross, until the cross, the sin debt uh -huh. hadn't been paid, so they couldn't be going into the third paradise with God, could they? Yeah. Because God hadn't paid the price yet. It was covered, but it wasn't paid for. Yes. It was looking, it was a promise. It was promised. It was a real solid promise, but it hadn't been done yet. Mm -hmm. All right. Now then after the resurrection of Christ, I believe that he took a lot of people with him, mm -hmm. resurrected, maybe all of them resurrected in the Old Testament to the third heaven. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know how many were resurrected and how many weren't. I know some were. Okay. But before the second coming, what are those people in heaven? Are they souls uh, without bodies? I don't think so. There will be some in the tribulation period that would be souls without bodies. Yeah. But my personal opinion is, which is not worth very much, but I think that maybe all of those people in the Old Testament were resurrected and taken with their body, in their bodies, to heaven, to the third heaven. All of them that were saved. The rest of them got to stay in the holding place, yeah. Hades or Sheol. So what happened to people that died during that time? During the tribulation, the tribulation period? Yeah, what happens to those uh, they, they go Their bodies will go to, uh, to Hades, or their souls will go to heaven. Yeah. Paul says in one place uh, that tribulation, that mortality might be swallowed up in life. Mm -hmm. Talking about. Uh, really paradise before the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Now let's go a little further. We can chase that rabbit for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't get anywhere if we do. And we probably won't have any more figured out when we do. There are some things we just don't know we have to settle for that, don't we, David? 
But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your life you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus bad things. But now he is being comforted here, and you are in agony. All right, you are over yonder in agony. All and right. Be, and besides all, all right. this, between us, you. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great chasm fixed, in order that those who wish to come over from here to you may not be able, and that none may cross over from there to us. All right, that's just, you can't go over. There is no second chance. That's what that means. No second chance. All right. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, that you send someone to my father's house, for I have five brothers. He remembered, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He remembered where he came from. He remembers that he got five brothers, and he remembered, and these people were all going to hell. They were all going to go to the same place he did. All right? Warn them, lest they come to this place of torment. But Abraham said to them, They have Moses and they have the prophets. They have got the Bible. That's what they got. They got the Bible. They got the whole Old Testament. Let them hear them. But he said, No father, Abraham. But if someone went back from the dead, they surely will repent. But he said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone rises from the dead. Did they? Were they? No. No way. All right. Now, We're still looking at this verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is life, eternal. Life, zoology. It is chaya in Hebrew, chaya. 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 And eternal is ionios, and in Hebrew it is awam. And in, in Hebrew, uh, uh, on page 601, it means endless duration. Hidden, secret. You can't see the end of it. You go back in time and eternity past when God only existed out there. And like in John 1 and 1, the oldest verse in the Bible is John 1 and 1. In R.K., Ain Hologos, in beginning, in locative singular feminine, one beginning. That's when nothing else existed. Kept on being Jehovah. And Jehovah kept on being a part of the Godhead because he kept on being God. That's Jim Phillips' translation of John 1 1. All right? For the wage of the sin is total separation forever, triunely, body, spirit, and soul. But the free gift of God is life eternal. Where? In Christ Jesus. And in the Old Testament, do we have any examples of this? Turn to Genesis the 16th chapter and verse number 4. Genesis 16 and verse number 4. There's a really a beautiful place. I was having a stroke the other day, I think. And I couldn't stand up. I couldn't walk across the house or anything. So I got my Hebrew Bible. See, I got to concentrate on that. I got that and I sat there in the room with just suspending and going on. I've had two or three little strokes. I just hope I don't have a big one where I can't. Well, not useful anymore. But, uh, boy, they sure do do damage to your brain cells. I can tell. That's all I can say. But I saw something this time. Very beautiful. And this is what it is. Genesis, the 16th chapter, and verse number 13. That one's very beautiful, but we want to go from verse 4 onward. Sarai. Sarai means what in the, in the Hebrew? Huh? Princess. It comes from a word that means princess or prince. But it's a conquering prince, one that is a warrior. Now, if you want to translate Sarai's name correctly, you would say contentious, troublesome, always in a battle. Now, that's what her name means. Contentious, troublesome, <coughs> and always in a battle. Always ready to fight at the drop of a hat, wearing chips on both shoulders. Bigger than the barn door. That's her. That's Sarai. Okay? Now let's look at Sarai just a little bit. Who's over there? Uh, Randall, are you there? Right. Verse number four. 
He went into Hagar, and she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her sight. All right. Now, here we have Sarah. I think this is more on Sarah's part than it is on Hagar's part. By the way, God protects Hagar tremendously. That poor woman had no control over her life at all. None. No control over life. Period. Zero. Remember, she's a slave girl. A had maiden. Okay? All right. And she was small in her mistress' eyes. All right. In her mistress' eyes, she was small. Sarah looked down on her. Now, the whole story was, is Sarah went to Abraham and he said, God has judged me. Sarah tells Abraham, God has judged me. The reason why I don't get pregnant is because God is mad at me. So, since God is mad at me and He has judged me, I want you to take that young, beautiful girl and I want you to go into her and cast your seed into her. Now, if God is mad at me, then she'll get pregnant and I'll have a child anyway because she's my, she's my handmaid. So, when... Abraham did that when he went into her. All right. When he went into her, she caught the seed. That's what the term is in Hebrew. She caught the seed. All right, and she got pregnant. Right off. So what? Now, what do you think that went on in Sarah's head? God is mad at me. He has judged me. He's mad at me. And then what? How does she look at her little girl then? She hates her. Because she's mad. She's mad at Abraham, and she's mad at God, and she's mad at the girl. All right? So now let's see what happens here. Uh, who was reading? Who was that? Uh, that uh, and Sarah said to Abram, May the wrong done me be upon you. I gave my maid into your arms, but when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her sight. Who, do, who despised? Who who does Sarah think despised who? God despised Sarah. God despised Sarah. God has made the choice. Well, she was right, and now she's mad because she was right. <laughs> Sarah, Sarai is mad because she was right. Yeah, God was mad at her. God had judged her. Is there something that she did earlier that she thought God was mad at her about? What God was doing was testing them. Yeah, I understand that. But she thinks that God's mad at her. She thinks God. God's mad at her. She thinks God has, she said that God had shut up her womb. That's right. But does, is there, I mean, does it ever give a reason why she feels that way? Because she didn't get pregnant. Other than she just she didn't get pregnant. Okay. The thing about it is, is when a woman in the Old Testament, a woman was man's property, by the way. But this one was a little bit wild. This is wild. Sarah's a wild woman. Okay, she's pretty, pretty hard to handle. She is. But when a woman didn't get pregnant, they, they all just took in consideration that God has now, there is, he's holding a grudge against her. So they go to God and ask God to remove the curse. She's still under the curse. She's not getting pregnant. I'm sure that she's still sleeping with Abraham. But she still isn't getting pregnant. But Hagar did. Now, Hagar means what? To wander with no future. That's what her name means. That means a, an eternal wanderer, a pilgrim. Her name's Pilgrim. That's right, Pilgrim, wanderer. All right? Let's go on a little further, uh, Randall. May the Lord judge between you and me. Oh, see that? Now, see there? But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your maid is in your power. Do to her what is good in your sight. So Sarah treated her harshly, and she fled from her presence. She ran. She kept on running from her face. That's what it says in Hebrew, from her face. Me, 
yet from her face. She kept running from her countenance. She kept giving her evil looks. And she ran. She was in a constant state of wandering and running and pilgrimage. She had no place. All right? And go on a little bit further now. Uh, Cindy, are you over there? Are you looking at the same thing? Mm -hmm. Could you read that, please? But the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness on the road to Shur. Okay, Malek. Malek, Jehovah, the angel of the Lord. And who is this angel of the Lord? Usually. It's a Christophany. It's a Christophany yeah. or a Theophany, which it means is God or Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Jehovah has, he has visited her. Now, Jehovah takes care of Hagar. He does. All right. I'm sure that Hagar is praying. Okay, Hagar is probably a believer, but she still has no, absolute no control over her future or present tense at all. All right. Go on, Cindy. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, where did you come from and where are you intending to go? And she said, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to See her. See the word mistress? Mm -hmm. That's her, that's her, that's the, the woman, the maid, the, the master of the house. Okay, the, the female master of the house. The angel of the Lord said to her, go back to your mistress and humbly submit to her control. Also the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be numbered for multitude. And the now this is, a, this is a promise. Mm -hmm. An unconditional promise to a worldly, a, a Gentile. By the way, Abraham's first child was a Hamite. This is it. His first child is a Hamite. Okay? His next child is going to be a Shemite, and then he's going to have more that are Jacobites. So all of us are related to Abraham directly through, I don't care whether you're a Ham, Shem, or Jacobite, you're related to Abraham, okay? Go on, Cindy. And the angel of the Lord continued, See now, you are with child and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, God hears. Now God named the child, didn't he? And the, God, and the child Ishmael means what? Not some ungodly name, it's God hears. Mm -hmm. Alright, God hears it. Sarah had some problems. Abraham had some problems. Abraham kept selling that woman. You know, he did. Well, maybe he was trying real hard. But God said, this is one of the promised sons going to come from that old gal, that old, that old hag. <laughs> That, that old gal, is good. That, that contentious woman is where the child is going to come from. All right? But he's going to change your name. All right? Going to change your name. Go on there, Cindy, just a little further. Um, see now, you are with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard and paid attention to your affliction. And he, Ishmael, will be as a wild ass among men. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he will live to the east and on the borders of all his kinsmen. So now pay it really close attention now. Now I'm going to read this. And she called with the Kara Shem and then the name of Jehovah. And she called the name Jehovah the one speaking ha the bar, the one speaking unto her you are El Roe. El Roe. The shepherd God. The all seeing one. Because Roy, Jehovah Jireh in, in Genesis, the 22nd chapter. Yeah. Jehovah Jireh, that's the same root form right here. Mm -hmm. The all seeing God. God saw what was going on. And he heard her and named her child God Hears. God protects Hagar. He does. Because that poor woman doesn't have any control over what's happening to her. All right. For you are God seeing. And she said, Even here have I looked after the one seeing me. Look at here. I have seen Jehovah. She saw God. She saw Jehovah. 
In Genesis, the 22nd chapter, Abraham saw Jehovah. And he said, now the word provide, Jehovah shall provide, that means to see to it. It doesn't mean to provide as we see it, but he was seen. All right, God saw to the offering and God was seen. In Genesis, 22nd chapter. This is beautiful here. The one seeing me, therefore, he called the well. The well, the one living, the eternal one living. Look at that. The one living, seeing me. Behold, between Kadesh and Bered, and bore Hagar to Abraham a son. And she called Abraham the name of his son, whom she had brought forth to Ishmael. And Abraham, being 86 years old, had Hagar's bearing Ishmael to Abraham. Now, 17 and verse 1. I want you to look at this. All right, came to pass. It became, is what it literally says, it became Abraham being a son of 90 years and nine, 99 years old, that appeared unto him. Appeared. That word appeared, that's, that's the word the all seen one. Mm -hmm. God appeared with seed. You can say, and when Abraham was 90 years old, Jehovah was seen by Abraham. He appeared to him. And this is the same word right here. With Ra, that's over there in Genesis 22nd chapter, when the God shall see to the offering, and God was seen there. And appeared Jehovah unto Abraham and said unto him, Ani El Shaddai. I am El Shaddai. I am the all-nourishing, all-providing, all-powerful one. All right. The all-powerful one. And Genesis 12 and verse 7. Let's look at that too. Genesis 12 and I hope you're enjoying this Old Testament language too. Genesis 12 and verse 7. We ye brought and appeared Jehovah unto Abram and said to thy saved I will give this land. Alright. And God, Jehovah, appeared again and every one of this is that Jehovah was seen. Every time he was seen. Now how was Jehovah seen? What did he look like? <clears throat> the one that walked in Galilee. That's who he saw. They saw the one who walked in Galilee. Who did uh, Moses see? In full glory, in all his glory, the one that was up on the mountain of transfiguration. That Moses and Elijah were there. Up on the mountain of transfiguration. Hebrews 9.27 For it is the penalty done to man wants to die, and then after that is what? The judgment. That's, that's it, people. For the wages, the poor wages, sin pays poor wages, disease and addiction. For the wages of the sin is eternal separation, spiritual suicide, triunally body, spirit, and soul. But the free gift, the charisma of the God, belonging to God, is life. Remember what, what Hager called him? The living, all-seeing one, the living one. All right, that's it. The God, the living, eternal, life eternal in Christ, in Christ, the Lord, the Master of us. All right, now 17 to 7 to verse 1, that is. 7 to verse 1. A. Agnoete. Agnoete. Adelphoe. Adelphoe. Dar. What's that next word? No more. Lalo. Lalo. Hote. Hote. Ho. Ho. No more. Cindy, you're getting an A plus tonight. I'm going to tell you that. You're reading this great. That's good. All right. And she's only been in a class how many months? Since September. Since September. All right. That's great. Next word. Curie. Curie. All right. Two. Entrepou. F. Hoson. Hoson. 
Chrono. All right. Chrono. We get our word chrono chronograph from that. We got our, we get our word chronology from that. All of it comes from this word right here, right out of Greek. We borrow a lot from Greek and English. Every scientific and medical term comes from Greek in the English language. Or a little old correlative there. Hey, are ye not knowing? Are ye ignorant? Second person, plural, present, indicative, active, from agnio, comes from gnosko, and not. This is where we get the word agnostic, not knower. Okay? Are ye agnostic, brothers? Knowing ones? Dative, plural, masculine, present, participle, active. For the law, I speak that the law, it lords over, it dominates, it incriminates, it judges. That's what the old word here, that a judge was a lawyer and a judge was a lord. You went before a king and the king was the what? The judge. If you walked into an oriental courtroom, which was usually the palace and the throne room, you walked into there, well, you walked in there with your eyes to the ground. If you looked at that judge, at that king, that prince, you were a dead man. And without saying one word, if he looked at somebody, that look said, kill him. Right now. Right now. Kill him right now. Boy. Oh. Lord's over. Lord's over the mankind. Over such... All right. Let's read this one from Amplified. 7 and verse 1 in the Amplified. You got that, Cindy? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you not know, brethren, for I am speaking to men who are acquainted with the law, that legal claims have power over a person only for as long as he is alive? All right. Mm -hmm. The Romans and the Jews and the Gentiles all knew the principle of the law. Romans, law was law. Okay? It was law. They knew what law was. Law didn't bend very much, did it? Only people break. The law didn't bend. Alright? The law was powerful. The law dominates man as long as he lives. Right? Seven and verse two. The law of marriage and the law of Moses. <clears throat> By the way, we are not under the law of Moses, are we? We're not under the law of Moses. We're under the law of grace. The apostle Paul didn't want to say the, the the law is dead. But he said, You are dead to the law. Now let's look and see what he says about the law. Okay. Hey. Okay. Gar. Gar. Epondros. Gine. We got a word gynecology out of that. To. Zonta. Andre. De de te. No mu. A. De. Apathone. Ho aner. Kater ge te. Kater te. Apo. Get this thing turned over here. I'll tell you what, I'm teaching this class by grace tonight because I didn't have anything left. <laughs> All right, where, where was it? Well, the last word and the last one. First word and the last one. Okay. Anthropo. Yeah. Poson chrono. Man over such a time. Chrono. All right? The word, that's also the word for tense in Greek is chrono. Tense. The, the time element. Zoe. Or ze. All right. Or are ye ignorant brothers, ones knowing, for the law I speak, that the law lords over and dominates incriminates and judges the mankind over such a time as he lives. He may live. Alright? Over such a time as he may live. 
it dominates him. For the underman, that's what it next one means. Now remember that, uh, now girls, I'm not putting you down here by any means, okay? But in the Oriental mind, a man was a total master of his own. A woman was property. That's what it was. So that's what we're looking at now. We're going back in time and the culture of the people that this that lived under the law. And the people that lived under the law, a woman was real lucky if she had a man that loved her. That's it. But she was his property. And uh, that was it. She was his property. For the, the woman that's under a man, to the living husband, has been bound. She has been bound. She didn't do it herself. She's been bound. It's been done to her. And who, who, basically, who decided who she was going to marry? Her daddy. The other man of the home was her daddy. It wasn't her. She didn't have anything to do with it. By law. By law. No move. Having been bound, Third person singular, perfect tense, indicative and passive voice. It was done to her, and it's perfect tense. It's done and final. Okay? No, but if he may die, he may have died. Third person singular, second aorist, subjunctive, he may. That subjunctive means may, he might die. The man, she has been uh, divorced. She has been unemployed. She has been fired. She has been nullified. She, her marriage has been annulled to him. Because he's no longer alive. Now a man is compared to the law of Moses. Okay? Now, the law of Moses, now Paul doesn't say this, but the law is dead. Compared to a man, the man when he is dead, the woman is free. Now, people, what he says here is the law of Moses has come and gone. The law of Moses was unto what? Yes. The preaching of John the Baptist. Yes. The law and the prophets were unto the preaching of John the Baptist. After that is preached the kingdom of God. The king had come. The master of the universe is now on the scene. And he'll take over his world for a while. She has been divorced. She has been unemployed. The word means lazy. All of that comes from this word, argue, hot argue. She's been discharged. Uh, page 219, analytical Greek lexicon. Are you there, Randall? Can you, you have got your... Page 219. Let's look at that word. I give you these so you can go look them up. Okay? Page 219. That's about halfway through this book. It's got 444 pages in it. All right. Do you see that? Uh, let's, let's read this out loud and see what it says here. Go ahead, Randall. Sarah says to render useless or unproductive. That means unemployed. The woman's unemployed. And she's unemployed now. Occupy unprofitably to render powerless, to make empty and unmeaning, to render null, to arrogate, cancel, to bring to an end, to destroy, annihilate, to free from, dissever, dissever from. Yeah. An annulment. Her marriage has been annulled. She's free. She's set free. And Paul says, you're free. You were married to the law. You have no way out, but now you're free. Isn't that beautiful? How many of the time have you ever heard that one? <laughs> we, we usually go by this and look over it too, too. You just go jump over it. But when you look at it, it really means something. 
Well, how about in Matthew 5, where Jesus says? Yeah, we're going to get into that a little bit more. Okay, okay we're going to get into it a little more. We'll never settle this. <coughs> we're not going to settle it. All right? Jesus was talking to in Matthew the 5. By the way, Matthew 5, 32, that's where you were going. Mm -hmm. Mark 10, 11, and 12, Luke 16, 18 through 20, Romans 2, 22, and 13 and 9, Revelation 2, 22, John 8 and 4, in a spurious passage, by the way, John 8 and 4 really isn't there. Okay? I want to tell you that. Proverbs 30 and 20 and 6, 26, James 4 and 4, Matthew 19, 3 through 9, Luke, Leviticus 20 and 10, Exodus 20, 14, Deuteronomy 5, 18, Jeremiah 3, 8 and 9, and Jeremiah 23, 14, Ezekiel 23, 37, and 16, 32, and 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 are all on this. Okay? We're uh, treading on virgin territory. And I want to explain something to you that so many people jump over also. In the biblical time, and still, even in this period of time when the Bible has been written, it definitely isn't true today, in most cases. In many cases. The law of marriage and Moses' law. All right? Now, God has done some really unusual things in making man and woman like they are. Uh, God made a man and woman to, to be sensory to each other that they, ex they excite each other by sight and by touch. Okay? This is something that God did. Okay? He, he did this. And uh, let's go on before I say any more about that. Let's go ahead and read this verse. Ara. Un, Dontos, Tu, Andros, Moikalis, Pre Matise, Yon, Ganete, Andri, Hetero, Yon, De, Apothane, Ho, Aner, Eleuthera, Esten, Apo, Tu, Nobu, Nobu, May, Ene, Alte, Moi Kalida, Geno Mene, Andre, Etero. Then, therefore, living the man, if her husband is living, she's an adulteress. She shall be called. If she may become a husband, two different. But if he may die, the husband, free she is from the law, not to be her adulteress, having become man, two different. Under the law of Moses, when a man married a woman, she should be a virgin. Or the law of the law of marriage which didn't take effect. The man could be annulled. If she wasn't a virgin on their marriage night, then he could say, She's not a virgin and I don't want her. She hasn't been faithful. She is not a uh, she is not competent be my wife. She was not separated. Um, the word uh, adultery is not in Hebrew. Not. N-A-A-P-H. Not. It means shame. It means faithless. It means ungodly. It means defile. It means to debauch. A woman that was not a virgin when she married her husband was considered to be a to, 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 uh, to deceive him. She deceived him. 
her uh, virginity was her seal that she had saved herself for this man. That was it. It was a seal. And when in marriage, when that seal was broken, that was the act of marriage. When a man and woman come together, it is not a marriage contract written, but it is when a man and a woman come together, they are sealed. And that is her seal that she was faithful and she's confident to be his wife. That's her seal. Just like in the seven seals of the, of the book, the book of the seven seals in the book of Revelation, each one was sealed. A woman's seal is her virginity. That's her seal. That she is legitimate. That she had kept herself. There's two words in, in Hebrew for uh, what we call virgin. One of them is Alma, and uh, it means a sexually uh, mature woman. That's not married. It doesn't mean whether she. It doesn't mean she is a, uh, a virgin. Uh, and a lot of people go there in Isaiah and, and try to say, well, that's the word Alma there. Well, there's a do, that's a dual prophecy, by the way. A woman was going to have a child, and they would name his name Emmanuel, but there was going to be a second one. The second one was going to be a virgin, and that was Mary. The word for literal virgin is uh, Bethula. That one that was guarded in her home, it has Beth, it, it means guarded in the home. She was guarded and she was made sure that she was a virgin. She had guards over her to make sure that her, she had locks on her windows. Really? That's the way they did it back then. They were, her father, if she wasn't a virgin when, he, when she got married, his dowry was gone. He wasn't going to get nothing because her seal had already been broken. And then she was considered a debauchery. Genesis 9, 22 and 23, Leviticus 18, 7 through 18, and Leviticus 20, 11 through 21 talks about this. A woman is property according to that time. And when the man broke her seal, she was his forever as long as he lived. That's the way to look at it. Now, in the Old Testament, in these, in these verses that I just read to you, in Genesis 9, chapter verses 22 and 23, that's when Ham went in and uh, uncovered his father's nakedness. That was considered uh, homosexuality. It was considered incest. When he saw his father, whether he had committed any acts or not, it, because he uncovered his father's nakedness. If a, and we have this in the New Testament, in the book of, of Corinthians, we have a boy there, a young man in the church, that is having sex with his own birth mother. And he has uncovered his father's nakedness. He has shamed and humiliated his father because she is his property. He has stolen his father's property. Your father's sister, if you, if under all these laws, if a, if a man had sexual relationships with his aunt, he had considered that he had uncovered his father's nakedness and his grandfather's nakedness. There is no term for grandfather in, the, in, in Hebrew or Aramaic, by the way. It means father. So your grandfather is still your father. Period. Okay. So his grandfather was his father, and when he had sex with his, his aunt, then he uncovered his grandfather's or his father's nakedness. Because they were all property. They, this is belong. This is my relation. Property. <clears throat> a woman's virginity is her seal to her betrothed. Why would a woman have this seal if God didn't create it? for that purpose. Think about that for a while. Why would a woman even have that if it wasn't for that purpose? Okay? To prove her fidelity. It was so important that God created it. The seal of perfect purity 
untouched fidelity, a gift between her and her husband only. To disdain this gift is treachery, debauchery, fraud. And once you have been sealed to that person, it can never then become anything else. That was that was in the history that we're looking at right here. Okay, that's you need to understand that history. Okay. Now let's look at this in the Amplified Bible. Send the over there in seven and verses two and three. For instance, a married woman is bound by law to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is loose and discharged from the law concerning her husband. Accordingly, she will be held an adulteress if she unites herself to another man while her husband lives. But if her husband dies, the marriage law no longer is binding on her. She is free from that law, and if she unites herself to another man, she is not an adulteress. All right. He's talking, he's using the analogy of marriage, which they understood. They understood that analogy to the law. Now, the law is our husband if we're a Jew. It owns us. We don't own the law. The Jews thought they owned the law. But the law owned them until Jesus came. Now they still wanted to be under the master law. They still wanted to be dominated and lorded over by the law. Do you want to become a woman? That's what he's asking them. Now every Jew knew this. When a Jewish boy prays in the morning... I thank you, God, that I'm not a Gentile. And I thank you, God, that I'm not a woman. That's what he says. I thank you, God, that I'm not a woman. The Apostle Paul had prayed that as a Pharisee many times. Now he's telling he said, People, you want to become a woman? You want to become a woman that's going to be lorded over? Do you really want the law of the Lord over you like a husband does over a wife? Do you want to have no future except what he says to you? Do you want to have no personal rights? You want to become a woman. So you want to become a woman. Now I'm telling you, back on women today, I'm not talking about you, but do you understand what Paul and Paul is talking about? You want to be a woman? You people disdained and looked down upon women as a lesser, as a weaker sex, as an inferior sex, and you want to become a woman so that the law can lord over you and be your master? Think about it for a while. Do you understand what Paul's talking about here now? That's a story, isn't it? That's quite a story. <clears throat> like we went back to Hagar we saw how she was totally powerless over her future finally she was kicked out Sarah said kick her out of my home I will not have that child to be heir with my son she was still kind of bitter and ready to fight and chips on both soldiers mm. even then huh? brother did you have a room? did you have a question no no Cindy? Well, I, I, you know, let's talk about the law. What is the law? It, let, let me give you my understanding. There's, there's the moral law, which is still in effect. There's the ceremonial law. The moral law. law is put in every man's heart, whether he's got a Bible or not. That's correct. That's every Romans. wild man in this world knows. Romans, the first chapter, yeah. that you know right from wrong, yeah. from okay. inside, in okay. your heart. But but that law uh, has never changed, that, because it's a reflection of the character of God. Now the dietary laws and the sacramental, the well, the, the uh, or sacrificial laws, they are of course a complete fulfillment of Christ. The dietary laws, I guess, are not applicable. To, to believers. So basically, we are still under God's moral, ethical law uh, because that, you know, that predated Moses. Uh, some of those commandments, even the commandment of marriage, marriage was given before. Predated Moses. Yeah. 
but the, but the, the law of the sacredness of life and the sec, sacredness of labor uh, in the Old Testament would uh, be foremost. So what, what what law are we... We're not to? under the law at all. We're not under the law. We're, we're under grace. We're under grace. Okay. We're not under the law. We're under grace. If we want to be under the law, we want to be a woman. We want to have no rights. We want to be cattle. We want to be property. Simple as that. We want to be property. Do you want to be property? Or do you want to be the Hebrew boy? That probably stung. Right? stung their and well, ears. you know, when you really get to looking at this, man, I mean, it really throws a hardball at you. When you really look and see what Paul was really saying. What is the date today? Is this the 18th? Um, 20th. So 20th. 27th is next week. So then... The 20th? Yeah. Yeah. 27. Well, I lost some days. I haven't had time to look up to see if the sun came up and went down. Okay. So we do 7-4. Seven, four, seven, four. We're going to look 7-4 next week. <coughs> Thank you for the attention. I hope you learned something from God's Word. It is beautiful from the original language. That's all I can say. You unfold it. Uh, Brother Hubbard used to say, looking at the King James is like looking at it in black and white in one dimension. In it. Hebrew and in Greek, he said it's like looking at it in full color from all dimensions. Yeah. Because you get to look at it from that. But, you know, when you translate, when you go back, you've got to go back to the culture. Or you miss the whole boat. And you would have missed the boat if we hadn't gone back to the culture tonight, wouldn't you? You'd have missed the boat. Simple as that. All right. We ready to go out and do something eternal? Go out there and, and converge upon the world? The... the uh, Yes, Brother John. I got one question. Yes. I was waiting to the end of this, okay? Yes. Because I know you're close to clear, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> I sat there and saw you. You were reading. Mm -hmm. And you were reading and you were talking. Uh-huh. Well, I read on the left to the right. Mm -hmm. and you read I was it. reading from right to left. Yes, I was I reading. I saw you Hebrew. reading on the right to the left. Yes. And when I saw that... And I said, <laughs> and I That's said, Hebrew. Hebrew. Everything west of Jerusalem reads from left to right. Everything, including Jerusalem, eastward goes from right to left. Mm -hmm. Now, is that Chinese thing, or is it just uh, Aramaic? Well, well it's, that's vertical and whatever, but all of the, the, of the oriental... Uh, language is those orient. I'm not talking about the far orient, the yes. far east. Okay. But uh, there it goes from right to left. Hmm. All right. All the Arabic languages, uh, Hebrew and all of that is all right to left. All your German, your Latin, your Greek, uh, Russian, and all of them go from left to right. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's why, John, you caught that. <laughs> Well, we're not going to be prejudiced and chauvinistic tonight, are we? Cindy, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, thank you for another interesting night revealing your word to us through a source that you spend a lot of time preparing for us. And I thank you, Lord, that you spent so much time. Um, you have Jim, keep him safe, keep him healthy, so that um, we can learn more of his knowledge and his understanding of the word in the way that you want us to understand. I ask this, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your attention well, during you. those hard seats. <coughs> And thank you for taking part in the class. <laughs> no I, for, I was going to get the uh, my camera out and take some pictures of you, and I forgot to do it. I even brought it tonight. There'll probably be more people next week. Maybe. I'll try to do it when more people are here. I guess better shut mm -hmm. all these recording machines off. Well, I could walk a little better than I could a while ago. When I first sat down, I couldn't hardly stand up.